welcome you back to the Sports Mix. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Kyle McLaughlin. We're now joined on the show by the new Houseman Girls basketball head coach, Tim Potter. Coach Potter, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. Um, coach, uh, since you took the job was the last time we had you on the show, uh, what have you learned from your team that you didn't know when you were hired since you've taken that job? About, I guess, what have you learned about your team since you took that job? Well, I've learned, first off, that they're very motivated to get better. They're excited, ready to get to work. They've had themselves about as good of an off season as a, as a first-year coach could ever could really have. Um, really, I got hired in May. Um, they've been working ever since. We've had 10-plus girls in the weight room. They've been at all the summer stuff, went to team camp. They just finished up a fall league right before regular season started. So, really, they've been hard at work. So, I found out they're really motivated and ready to buy in. It's great to hear. What are some of the things uh, that you're kind of having to teach them under your new leadership as the head coach? Well, I think uh, consistency is a big one. I think um, just getting them to buy in as a program, you're looking to get more kids to show up. And, and do things, not just show up when it's November. Um, so I think that was the first big step, which we've had a good um, teaching lesson there where a lot of them bought in pretty quickly, which is great. Um, and I think it, really learning how to win and lose as a team and play together at most. Um, I know some of these girls haven't played together. Some of them have played. So I think it's, you know, a new system getting put in. Um, it, it's just a lot of, of getting them to buy in. Coach, you'd mentioned the uh, the hard work and the wanting to win of your girls that you've seen so far. Would you say that that kind of goes along with the identity of of Musselman just in general as being kind of that hardworking, uh, you know, wanting to win, will to win type of school in area? Oh, absolutely. I would say so. Um, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to – that's going to pretty much be our identity. It's hard work energy and get after you defensively first um it, you know if you can bring the energy every day and give me all if they give me all they got hustling every play dying for loose balls playing defense the offense will come along but uh, absolutely i think that helps kickstart everything and these girls are really grinding man they're really motivated who are some of the girls that are returning to the team and who are some uh new players to this year's team well the good news is that we graduated nobody. So we get, so I get the group of girls back that were here last year. We did have two girls transfer. Um, but for the most part, the core of the girls that were here last year are back, and we have a good sophomore and freshman class added to the mix as well. Um, I'll just start with Sierra Polar. It's going to bring a lot of energy, a very quick guard, can, can step out, shoot it, lock, team, lock some players down. Uh, Nevaeh Thompson, junior. Um, those two are, I would make an argument to be top 15 player in the state when it comes to locking players down defensively. They bring a lot of speed, a lot of length. They cause a lot of problems for teams. Um, let's see. Kaylee DeLuca is another one. She's had a great off season. She brings some speed. Um, we have Emily Stevens as a freshman. She, she was very successful over at the middle school level. She's playing varsity with us this year, bringing some good minutes. Um, she's doing a lot of good things. So we have Jada Guns, a sophomore, very fast, athletic, long, can shoot the ball well. Um, Larkin Walker is a big senior. She's a six foot one kid that's worked hard in the off season. She's finishing plays inside. She brings a lot of physicality. Um, and honestly, I can go on and on. There's a lot of kids here that, that will do a lot of things. So good things for this team. We know that Spring Mills lost a lot of players, so things are definitely going to be different there. Just. I guess, what's your thoughts on transfers and, and how that has impacted things, and especially as a first-year head coach, uh, having that now be something that you'll have to, I guess, deal with in some sort of way? Yeah, for sure. I, I think you're going to see it become more and more common. I think we're now in the testing phases with it being the first year. Um, you see it with college. That's where it's really rolling. Hopefully it doesn't get quite to that extent. But, um, yeah, it's going to make an impact for sure, especially if you have a team like Spring Mills who had – a chance to win a, a championship there. I mean, that changes the whole complexion of their team, a new coach, and now you got to have other players buy into that. So, absolutely, it could definitely make or break a breaker team to an extent. 
Um, but also, if you look on the flip side of that, um, it's also another opportunity for other players to step up and have another a bigger role that you can develop and hopefully keep them locked in. Um, but, yeah, I agree. It's definitely going to throw a world. It's definitely an extra thing. Us head coaches have to, you know, be ready to adapt to and take on. Let's continue looking at the conference. Even though you guys are a Berkeley County school, you are – paired in a section with the two Jefferson County schools. So just talk about, uh, even though the season hasn't begun yet, how strong you feel like the conference is this year and the chances of you guys potentially being one of the two out of the region heading to the state tournament. Uh, I think it's pretty wide open. I really do. I think especially with Spring Mills, those players leaving, I think every team in the conference in general has something unique to bring to the table. I think yeah, we have a lot of second-year coaches, first-year coaches, but we, it, there's definitely some pieces to work with. I think it's going to be competitive. I mean, you look at Hedgesville. They return most of their players. They get a couple athletes that are coming out that are good stuff. Um, they'll be better. Uh, we have everyone returning. We've had a great off season. I look for us to make a big push here. Um, and I think Washington, they get key players back for them. They'll be competitive. Their coach does a really nice job. Um, Dane from Jefferson, he does a fantastic job. No matter what talent he's got, he's going to get those girls playing hard for him. Um, in, in Martinsburg, uh, Good Ronnie does a nice job. They have some bigs that, that, that can cause havoc, some really nice sides. You've got a little combination guard. So, I mean, I think it's going to be really competitive. I think it's wide open. I think any two teams from the conference, I don't think it would be stunning to see, you, you know, two different teams make it. And, Coach, you talked about the potential for different teams making it into the uh, playoffs or into the state tournament. And, uh, you know, in your section in particular, you have Jefferson and Washington, two different teams the last two years have made it to the state tournament. Um, both those teams, you know, still have a lot of talent on their rosters, but not quite the teams maybe they were last season or the year prior. So how does that open up things for your side of uh, the section? I think it opens up for sure. I think it's. I don't think it's going to be a runaway for any team. I don't think there's a clear cut dominant team. But I will say what I can't tell you how many wins and losses or if we're going to make this or do that. I can't tell you that. But what I can tell you is, is these girls are bought in and they've had themselves a, a fantastic off season. They've been turning some heads from people that have seen them in fall league and and I think we're going to make a statement a little bit this year. I think we're going to be able to to surprise a couple people. You also mentioned a uniqueness about every team. What do you feel like is the uniqueness of your team compared to the other five? I think we're going to be arguably one of the fastest and have a lot of length. That And I think we have depth off the bench this year, which I think will be big. Um, I think um, having that speed and that length can really change the complexion of a game because um, it can really – cluster teams when you can get after them and make them start turning it over. I think it changes the pace of the game. It doesn't let teams run things they normally might run to be successful at. I think it can make things a little chaotic. When speed is your strength, is there anything you try to do as a coach to use that strength to your advantage? Oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, we're going to try, we'll try to apply pressure and, and just hustle and bring a lot of energy. That's where it all starts. Looking at your schedule for this year, uh, we've already talked a good bit about the conference portion. Let's talk about the non-conference portion uh, and looking at some of these teams. It looks like Shrando, Cabell Midland, Hurricane, Buchanan, Upshur, a lot of long trips. How do you feel like that's going to benefit your team this year? Well, I think it'll benefit for sure because, A, you're going to get the refs playing against quality programs, good teams. And, and to be honest, it'll be a good opportunity to see where we're at, where we've grown compared to last year and the year before. Um, and I think it's just a great opportunity because at the end of the day, if you're going to make the state tournament, we're going to travel to Charleston anyway. So, And you're going to have to play teams that are high caliber. So you might as well get a taste of that and get some reps and action in now. All righty, Coach Potter, before we let you go, final question, more of a non-basketball one. Just tell us about during the off season and your life, what you like to do to get away from basketball and relax and not have your mind solely set on the basketball season? Well, my time away from basketball half the time turns into talking about basketball because my wife, who's just fantastic as a former coach as well and a former player. Um, but when we don't talk about that, I like putting all my free time to them and my two little ones. I have two 
Um, little ones, my daughter's going to turn four, my son are turning two, and then I have a newborn coming after basketball. So my little ones get all my attention on the free time. And the other thing I like to do is I love lifting weights. That's kind of my self-time. All right, Coach Potter, thank you for joining us and definitely looking forward to the season, to seeing how uh, your team does this year. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. So, again, that was Coach Tim Potter.